Hey, thanks for joining me. And in this video, we're going to be talking about measurement error, uh, specifically measurement error in the um, independent variable. So those are the variables on the right hand side of our regression. And I want to be speaking about why this actually leads to a violation of the Gauss Markov assumption of zero conditional mean of errors. Well, we spoke another way of actually illustrating this zero conditional mean of errors assumption by saying that the covariance of ui with our independent variable xi won't be equal to zero. So if either of these two things are true, or in fact both of them are true, then we know that this leads to a sort of beta hat OLS to be um, biased. And I want to speak about why that's the case. So let's think about the example which I gave in the previous video, which was relating a company's level of sales to their advertising expenditure. And I said, we're not going to think about causality going in the other direction, even though it's probably the case that companies set their advertising budget according to their, their sales. And, and the problem here is that we don't actually observe the company's level of advertising directly. Perhaps we only observe it indirectly. So perhaps we have some sort of proxy for it, which I'm going to call MT, or some sort of, or perhaps another way of thinking about this is the company hasn't kept their sort of um, books correctly, so they don't know exactly how much money they spent on advertising. So the sort of actual value which we see or we record M is equal to the level of advertising plus some sort of small idiosyncratic error. So the actual regression equation which we estimate then is going to be S is equal to alpha plus beta times 80. Well, 80 is equal to MT, if I took the VT over to this side, it would be MT minus VT plus UT, which I can sort of write out uh, more completely, which is alpha plus beta times MT plus some sort of composite error, ut minus beta times vt. So this is our composite error term here. And we're interested in finding out whether there is some covariance between our regressor mt and the error or a composite error, which is ut minus beta vt. And we know that if this doesn't equal zero, then that's going to be a violation of the Gauss-Markov assumption of no endogeneity. So OLS is likely going to be biased. So how are we going to show this? Well, this term here contains a VT. And we know that MT itself actually contains a VT by this relationship here. So this is going to be something like, and it's not going to be exactly, but it's going to be something like minus beta times the covariance of VT with um, AT plus VT, because I've, I've sort of iteratively, uh, well, sorry, I've substituted in here um, AT plus VT for MT. So sort of writing that out in the next line, well, that's the same as the covariance of VT um, with VT where I've assumed that the covariance of VT with AT is zero. Well, the covariance of VT with VT is just the variance of VT, which let's say I'm going to call sigma V squared. Well, I note that this in general doesn't equal zero. And in fact, this actually suggests the direction of bias in our OLS estimates. It's suggesting that our OLS estimates are going to be biased downwards. And the degree of that bias is going to be increasing in the um, increasing in the level of variance in the measurement error. So it's going to be increasing in the amount of measurement error which we measure our um, independent variable.